Barbara, it's great having you join us today. What do you see as the challenges for utilities as they think through their customer experience strategies? I think there's um, a couple of, of high level challenges that they face. And so if you look first just at the market in terms of um, you have the decreasing demand um, for energy, um, you have the increasing prices, um, you have the disruptive market forces with the new entrants that are coming in, and then you have uh, changing expectations from your customers and also your employees. So I think when you look at those four you know, high level challenges that utilities face, um, there's a number of, of implications to that um, and priorities that utilities have to make. How are customers' expectations changing? Um, you know, technology, we'll, we'll start there. Um, you know, it used to be that customers um, you know, received their, their bill, you know, used energy, received their bill, and paid their bill. Um, but now customers want things to be personal. They want it to be real time to them. They want it to be relevant to what's happening um, in their life, and they want it to be local. Um, so they want to feel that they're you know, interacting with the utility and actually have some control over um, you know, how much they pay, what they use, how they communicate, what channels they use, um, when they talk to the utility. So uh, it's changing quickly and quite a bit. How do utilities make energy relevant and interesting and engaging? Yeah, I think there's, it presents a couple of challenges um, because when you look at how do we make energy relevant and interesting um, when it's something that has been taken for granted for so many years because utilities have done an incredible job providing reliable, safe service. And so we didn't have to think about it and we didn't think about what that energy and power was delivering and enabling us to do. And so the challenges utilities have now is that uh, the new market entrants have started to make um, energy interesting and interactive. And utilities have a choice to make. Um, and, and how are they going to compete? Are they going to look at what their strengths are and um, partner um, with these new entrants that are coming into the market? Or is it something that they are going to want to develop those core strengths and compete on their own? And so I think those are you know, two of the challenges and decisions that they face right now. In today's utilities, what are you seeing as the major changes in their cultures? My passion is, um, is really in aligning the, uh, your culture to the, the customer experience. And employees um, are customers as well, and our employees are changing. So if you look at the difference in the generations and what they expect from, um, from work and from life and a work-life balance, it's very different from when you and I entered uh, the workforce. And um, so I think it's how do you build flexibility um, and alignment into a culture where each generation um, has a different expectation of what it means to be part of a utility or part of an organization. How is the role of customer service reps changing? The customer service reps have just such a critical role being the front line and really the face to the utility. And you know, one of the drivers of employee engagement is career development. And so when you start looking at the new channels, um, this is a great way for people to start developing and growing in, in the same career that they've chosen, which is you know, they want to help and serve people. And so now they have a number of different ways that they can do that. And so they can learn a new channel and do social media or social care, um, chat, respond to emails. So um, it isn't a monotonous, you know, I'm taking 100 phone calls a day. You now have that multi-channel option. So to me, you know, I look at it as a way to really build um, some career development and engagement within the call centers. How are you seeing the market disruptions that utilities are facing? You know, I compare it, and, and I'll give a couple of examples in other industries first, because, you know, if you look at um, what's happening in the, the transportation industry with Uber, you look at what's happening in hospitality with Airbnb, where you have um, new ideas and new companies coming into regulated environments that don't have to meet the same regulatory requirements. And utilities have the same thing. You know, there's a lot of exciting new technologies um, from you know, the smart thermostats um, to storage technologies to new lighting technologies. Um, but they don't have 
to meet the same regulatory requirements. Um, but when you look at what utilities do bring to the table, um, it's customers. Um, that's what these new entrants don't have, and it's what utilities do have. So there's a, a great potential there for um, long-term success, whether you partner or you start to really engage your customers because you see the value uh, in the advantage that brings the utility space. What's next after safe and reliable power? This is kind of the catch-22. I mean, they still have to provide that safe, reliable power because the minute they stopped investing in that infrastructure um, and things weren't as reliable and weren't as safe, um, you know, customers wouldn't accept that either. So the challenge is, you know, how do I prioritize my investments in this new world? And that's where I think you start looking at the regulatory environment and you know, that needs to change as well. So I think that's, that's one area where the utilities are going to have to start relooking at, you know, to compete in this new world, they have to look at the regulatory environment and there has to be a new partnership there. So where does a customer service executive start? To me, the best place to start is always to, to restart with your vision. Um, and, you know, reevaluate is the vision of the organization um, still the right one, and then recommit to that, to your vision, and be prepared to make the tough decisions you need to make to deliver on that vision and, and the brand promise. So first understanding what is it that the company stands for, and then putting a plan together on how do we deliver that from the customer care perspective, and looking at all of your, your processes and asking the question, all right, is this enabling us to deliver on the brand promise to our customers and the vision of the organization. Um, and then you look at the technology is next and you know what technologies do we need and when and what customer what uh, customer segments do will that serve. Um, so I think it's really taking that disciplined approach of starting with that vision and where you're going um, and, and um, putting a, a plan and path together uh, to get there. And that really takes two components. It's, it's your employees and your customers. What's the role of EY? You know, it's interesting. Earlier today at the Executive Summit, um, we talked about the, um, how global our world is becoming. And um, so when I look at EY and, and where we're helping clients, um, being a global organization, it's bringing those um, best practices and thought leadership really from around the world. Um, to deliver the best solution for our clients. Um, it's looking at um, a disciplined process um, from end to end, not just within the utility space, but bringing those best practices um, across industries and applying them uh, to our utility clients.